Hey, Joe Gilder here. In this video, I want to take you through the project page in Studio One. It's one of my favorite features of Studio One, and I haven't done a video on it in a while. So if you've never messed around with project page, which is our mastering page, the page where all the cool mastering stuff can happen, this video is going to give you an overview of what that does. So uh, how do we get to the project page? Depending on your version of Studio One, this is version six, you actually, from here, you might say, I don't even know how to get there. Uh, you come to new. And then under these templates, you pick one, like let's say it's called Master and Release. Uh, so that's the one we're going to pick. And that's going to open up this. This is the project page. Right now, there's nothing in here, but this is the place where we can bring in all the tracks for an EP or an album, and we can do everything we want to do to them, apply limiting, adjust volume, measure loudness, all that stuff can happen within this page. What's really interesting about one of my favorite things about Project Page, and I can't, I thought about skipping this part because um, I've talked about it before, but it's just so interesting and I find people don't realize how cool it is. Um, let's actually rename this project. We're going to rename this one to uh, My Amazing Album. Okay. That's the name of this project. It's currently an empty project. So just kind of file that away. There's an empty project that's open. From within Studio One, we click on this button on the top right corner. We can go back to the home page. Okay. So that project is still open in the background. We're now here on the home page. I want to open up a mix that I've been working on. Here's the mix. Okay. <clears throat> now, when I go to export this mix down, let's say, the, the normal way to do that is to come to um, song, export mix down, right? Command E. And that pulls up a window that lets me export a WAV file, MP3, blah, blah, blah. Um, and if I wanted to put a limiter on there, to get the volume up because I'm going to send this to the client to review a mix. I could put the limiter here in my main output, which is fine. Uh, I just have to remember to turn that off later, right? Because I don't want the limiter on there now because this is just a mix session. I want the limiter to be applied in the mastering session later. So turning this on and off is a bit of a pain, right? It's just something you have to remember to do and inevitably you forget um, and you render this to put it into a mastering session and you realize, ah, I got to go back and undo it. So that's one of the many problems that this project page solves, but how so? So the current page we're looking at, where we do our recording and our mixing, is called the song page. The other one is the project page. We can actually connect these two together internally so that the project page, or so that the song page, sends its mix to the project page. Here's how that works. We have a project already open. We can check that by clicking on this little button over here. It'll switch between the two open ones. If there's more than one, if there's more than two, it'll give you a list to pull from. But with that other project open, we come up here to the menu to song. And you may have seen this before and not realize what it is, but there's an add to project menu item here. And it goes to list off basically any, all projects I've had open recently. I could create a brand new one with the name is the title of this song, or I can add it to one that's already open, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna click this and then check out what happens. Okay, it switched over to the project and it says update mastering files in the world mix one. That's the name of the song. And so I'm going to say, okay, now check out what happens. If we were just looking at the project page, it flipped back over to the song page. And now what's it doing? It's doing an export mix down. I didn't, I didn't tell it to export mix down. It is doing it as a part of this send to project feature. So it tells me that this mastered or updated in 10.6 seconds. And now I have a mix down here. The mix is now here inside. It's, I get so excited. It's here inside the project page. I did not have to export a WAV file and then open up my file browser, find the file, and drag it in. It actually all happened under the hood inside of Studio One. Now I can still, let me see if I can find a file real quick. I can still drag audio files in, right? So I can do it just like a typical mastering suite, but I can also connect existing mixes into Studio One. And here's where it gets even cooler. I'm going to close this project for a second. I'm going to go in here and let's say I came into this mix and I made a bunch of changes. Realistically, let's say I turned this vocal up a little bit. But let's say I did a whole bunch of changes. I hit save. I close the mix. I go have lunch. I come back. I decide to take a look and see how my project's going. I open up the mastering page, the project page, and it says update mastering files tracks and it lists this song so what it's telling me is and we can see over here we can see that this wrench over here is red this song has been updated since the last time i was here 
And it says, basically, would you like me to update this mix with the new mix? And if I say yes, it's going to do that process again. It's going to open up the song. It's going to render a mix down, which we can tell it to do that offline or in real time, whichever you want. Um, and then it's going to close the song, come back over to the project page and say, we're good. We updated it. Yay. Guess what? This works if I have one song or 12 songs or 20 songs in this project. Meaning if I go and do a round of mix tweaks on 12 songs and all of those songs were previously at some point added to a project page, I can open the project page after making all those mix tweaks and it will automatically go render each of those mix downs for me. If you've ever had to do this process yourself, you know how much time that saves and also keeps you from having to keep a paper trail of which file is which. I know when I open this project, I've got the latest mix right here. That's all I need to know. That is incredibly helpful because now I'm not having to do any sort of version control. I just know if I made any changes, even changes I forgot that I made and I forgot to do a mix down, the project page has my back and is going to do that for me. So that's the big, that's the big, big cool feature here. If you do your recording, your producing, and your mixing in Studio One, mastering in Studio One just makes a lot of sense. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual project page itself. What's included? Uh, so the, the basic layout is this top left corner gives us the ability to have some titles here. So this is my amazing EP. Artist is Joseph McGregor. Sun. Um, and we can go and put in all of our like metadata stuff here. We can even upload album artwork here if we want to. That all gets applied when we go and export this. By the way, the way to export things from here, it's not an export mix down feature. It's actually this button up here called digital release. This allows me to export all of the songs in all of the formats if I want in one fell swoop. I set all the things like I want. I say okay, and it does it for me. Pretty handy. This is how I actually handle when I'm producing a project and not even mixing and mastering it, I will make sure after I'm done recording that I add it to, the, to a project for this EP. And then at the end of the day, after we're done recording all the songs, I can come to this page and export a mix down of everything. And I can do something like add a limiter to the main output, set it up to a ceiling of minus one, increase the gain by six to eight dB just to get the volume up. And that will apply to every mix in this session. And the limiter only lives here on the project page, not on the mix pages. So when I open up these mixes, there's no limiter there for me to turn off or turn on or to forget about. It's all happening for me under the hood. I love that so much. Uh, there's also, for those of you who are curious, you can actually export disk images. You can actually burn to a CD disk drive if you have one of those. And you can export a DDP. This is the file format required by um, CD replication houses. So they'll say... You're going to send us your, your album to print a bunch of CDs. Give us the DDP file. Studio One can spit that out for you. No problem. All right, so the left-hand side. Here's the track. We can expand this track. If we click this little down arrow and adjust the data for each. So here's the album artwork there. For each song appears the data for the entire album. And then here are the places where we put our effects. We can put our per song inserts here. Right? I may put an EQ on this first one. I may not put one on the second one. This is the equivalent of like the channels in a mixer. Their individual song plugins go here. Down here in the master section, this is where plugins get added that apply to every song. So I typically have EQs and things on individual channels and my limiter and most of my any other like overall processing goes down here. The biggest area of real estate is uh, this section here, which this operates as a spectrum meter. So if I hit play for, uh, for just a second... You can see, so I have it muted because this song is not a part of something I can share right now, but this gives me, shows me what's happening with the frequencies. And I can even, uh, if I want to, as it's playing, I can change the view. So we've got this big kind of broad octave view. We've got a third octave view, a 12th octave view, which actually has piano notes down here. So I can say, huh, what's this build up right there? It's happening right around an E or maybe a D sharp, that can be interesting information sometimes. FFT is my personal favorite. It's just nice and detailed and bouncy. Plus, when I hover over a section, it tells me what exact frequency I'm pointing to. And right there, you see where it says note? It tells me the note as well. So I can say, hmm, what, what note is this? And I can say, oh, that's an E. Cool. Nice to know. Um, we also have a couple of, that's a nice curve if you're into just something a little more minimal. This stuff looks neat. I don't really know what to do with it, but it's cool. And it gives you this like visual 
looks like I'm doing like, like what's the forensic, like audiology work with something like this, but it's neat. It's interesting. If you can learn how to use that delightful. And then the segments view is kind of nice too. Um, which it divides it up. I'm honestly not entirely sure how the segments works. You can see the segments. The cool thing about Studio One, this is why I get I get occasionally get comments from people and they say, oh, Joe's such an amateur. He doesn't know the software. The thing is, you don't have to know everything a piece of software does to do amazing things with it. Some of the most successful engineers, producers that I know here in the Nashville area who are working on major label projects, they will call me and ask me Pro Tools questions. I haven't used Pro Tools in over a decade um, because they just know enough to make great music. And if they get stuck along the way, they ask for help. So don't don't feel like you have to understand everything to be good at something or to even help other people. Anyway, tangent over. This one, the cool thing about Studio One is when you don't know something, which there'll always be something you don't know, a lot of times you can just hover the mouse over it and it'll just tell you. This tells me this is a segment between 450 and 560 hertz. This is 560 to 710. This is 710 to 900. So there seems to be a fairly sensible approach to how they divide these things. I'm guessing down here is a lot smaller number division, 45 to 56, because 45 to 56 is a big spread as far as what it sounds like and how much energy it takes up in a mix. Anyway. You have all of that there. I really like the FFT. Um, you can add in things like <clears throat> this hold function gives you kind of a, an overall kind of average look at what's happening. Actually, this is the average, and that's the hold. So the hold kind of is grabbing the peak. Um, average is showing you more the average. Those two will look similar, but not exactly the same. Also, they move around and dance, which is kind of nice. Here is the level meter. This is what's coming the very last thing as you run it through all the processing, EQs, compressors, limiters. This is the final final place where it goes. And this is telling us the final output level. The default mode is peak RMS. So the level you've, you've seen this before, the little white lines are the, the average RMS level, the top parts are the peak. Uh, but what's really interesting is we also have these K meters and the EBU, EBU R128. I like to use K14 for mastering, where I've got everything kind of jumping just above this zero mark into the yellow and the let me turn it up so you can see it. If I crank it a little bit into the yellow for most of the song, into the red for the loudest sections. Um, this makes sure that I have nice dynamics to the master without it being overly loud. Um, there's a clip light here just in case that we're clipping. And then over here, we've got some loudness measurements, which are super helpful. So we can see kind of an instantaneous uh, LUFS value here um, in addition to the R LRA, which is kind of a, LRA is telling you kind of the dynamics of the song itself. Does it get loud and quiet? Um, this is giving me a true peak setting, and this is giving me the loudness units, LUFS, instantaneous, like what's happening. Right now, it's about minus 10 LUFS, which is a little bit on the loud side. But also, my one of my favorite things, uh, by the way, this is a spectrometer, shows you kind of what's happening stereo-wise, also shows you if anything's out of phase between the left and the right channels. If this meter goes to the left, you've got a phase problem left to right. It means you probably try to do some crazy cute stereo thing, and it's not working very well. Um, one of my favorite things about the project page is I can import something and I can come over here and click this loudness information section and it will actually take a moment to measure the loudness of this particular track and it'll give me all that information. So while down here is a meter giving me the current like loudness measurement at this moment in time, over here is giving me an average of that. So this, even though at this moment in this loud section of the song, oh, I've got it. <laughs> It's going through a limiter. That's why it was so loud. It's more like minus 10. Okay. I was about to say, that is wicked loud for a song that I mastered. Uh, this song is coming through, and in this end of the song, it's coming in about minus 11 luffs. That's where it's sitting right at this moment. But the overall average is about minus 12.6, which I'm totally happy with. Um, it looks like it true peaks, which means I must have not set my limiter correctly. So this one is technically peaking a little bit. Um, if we look at the post effects, it actually gives me, this is the raw audio measurements. These are the measurements after all the plugins that I've done. So you can see I jacked it up because I had this limiter set, set to cranked when I pressed that button. But if I make any changes, like I turn the limiter off and things like that, we can have it re-measure the volume, which is pretty handy. So ma mastering is the one phase of the process where things are pretty, There's an. it's certainly still art and there's still like a, a sense of art, art artistry to it. I can't say that word, but there's also a level of like science and math to it where we have to like know 
what our loudness levels are going in, what our loudness levels are once we've mastered it, um, what formats are we going to export as, things like that. Um, and Studio One does a good job of making that as easy as possible. You still need to understand the mastering process, but the actual mastering suite has kind of everything you need available for you at your fingertips, which is pretty great. And then, of course, we've got all the, the tools that you might need for mastering, such as a limiter, multiband compressor. You can do mid-side processing using our splitter tool. That's another video for another day. Um, and, of course, you can use your third-party plugins as well. Whatever your favorite limiter of choice is, for example, you can drag those in here, and they will work as well. All right, that is an overview of the Studio One project page. By the way, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Apologies. The project page is only available in Studio One Professional. So if you are using Artist, for example, one of the benefits of upgrading to Pro or becoming a Studio One Plus member is you get access to the project page as a part of that. If you plan on releasing any music at all, and you're not going to be having someone else master it every time, or if you if you just produce and mix and someone else does your mastering, the project page is still a very handy tool to have in your tool belt. All right, my name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.